Today's Gospel shows Jesus teaching His disciples to pray. He starts by telling them that words alone are not enough. I myself am guilty of going through the motions of prayer, but my mind is somewhere else. Jesus teaches a simple prayer in the Our Father, which we all learn early in our Christian life. It is a very powerful prayer because it directly comes from Jesus. But I never realized it until I heard Father Fernando Suarez give a homily. I was then assigned by my company in Sydney, Australia back in 2008, and I was asked to become a catcher for those who will be slain, or in layman's terms, fall to the ground when Father Suarez goes around to touch the foreheads of those he prays over. In his homily, I distinctly recall his recollection of his gift of healing first manifested itself at the age of 16. An old lady was very sick. I forgot what sickness it was, but definitely it required a miracle for healing. Father Suarez was initially surprised at the request for pray over, that the only words he could utter then were those of the Our Father. After a sincere Our Father, the lady was immediately healed. The challenge for us is to be present when we pray the Our Father or even the Hail Mary so that our prayer will truly pierce our hearts as it travels to the ears of our God. We must realize that prayer does not transform God but transforms us because our Father already knows what we need even before we ask. Only if we have that desire to be in the present when we pray will our prayers truly be effective. Perhaps as we pray the Our Father, we can focus on a particular phrase and dwell on it for some time before we move on to the next phrase. Is it your will be done because you have entrusted to Him already an important decision or situation regarding your job, a business, a loved one, a relationship, finance, a trip, or whatever? Is it give us this day our daily bread because you have material and physical needs? Is it forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us? This needs our utmost reflection because it is about forgiving and reconciling with somebody. Jesus also teaches us that whatever we pray for, in words of our own, it must be heartfelt and sincere. For our minds not to wander, we need to shut ourselves off from everything around us so that our focus is just on the Lord. And oftentimes, in our need and desperation, we ask the help of others to pray with us. If our community storms the gates of heaven in sincere prayer for a miracle, for sure, if this is part of God's plan, He will make this happen. On May 21st, 2008, Bruce and Kelly Jackson's 22-month-old son, Eric, wandered away from the playground at a local Mother's Day Out program. Before caregivers noticed he was missing, Eric fell headfirst into a six and a half foot abandoned well. Somebody said there was water in it. We arrived on the scene. We were presented the child by the staff there. I do not know how long without oxygen, but from our indicators, from what we look for, um, he was cyanotic, he was blue. He, it, there was nothing on the, uh, the monitor, no showing no heart activity was not breathing on his own. In all practical purposes, he was dead. First responders immediately started CPR, and Eric was rushed to the nearest hospital. We went over and um, um, held his hand, and um, he didn't seem recognizable. He wasn't, he wasn't a little boy we saw that morning. They were still doing everything they could. But after 90 minutes of CPR and without any additional medical intervention, Eric's condition changed suddenly. And they came running outside and said his heart is beating again. Miraculous is a word, unbelievable. Uh, in my 25 years, never seen before, unexplainable. Still in critical condition, Eric was life flighted to Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. They told us that his uh, kidneys had shut down. Um, that his lungs were damaged, that his liver was shutting down, um, his uh, internal organs were failing. Um, they didn't know the extent of the brain, brain damage. And they said, if he makes it through the night, we'll talk tomorrow. My prayers were, I wasn't sure if he was gonna be okay, but I knew that um, I just needed God's strength whether he made it or he didn't. As news of Eric's accident spread, people all over the world were praying for him. Our church during that time period 
was just amazing, overwhelming. At this point, uh, there were, it had to have been thousands of people praying for us. You just felt the love and the concern. Eric was on life support and in a coma. After one week, due to his lack of progress, doctors scheduled a meeting with Bruce and Kelly. He was on, you know, breathing machines and, and all the necessary equipment to keep him alive. They were gathering all the specialists and uh, we were supposed to meet that afternoon. But the Jacksons never had that conference with the doctors. Before the meeting, that's when um, one of the nurses ran in and said that he was awake. <laughs> um, as, it, as exciting as it was when he was born, that was even better. It was just an amazing experience. Like, this is amazing. This is miraculous. In the months to follow, Eric had to undergo extensive physical therapy to learn how to walk, talk, and eat again. So you could see the delays in certain areas, but that gap just kept getting narrower, more and more narrow. Today, Eric has no residual effects from the accident and is a bright and healthy eight-year-old. If you saw him, you would never know that anything had happened. Every day, he's just, uh, he, he does uh, the things that you would expect a normal boy to do. The Jacksons say they pray Eric's experience will bring hope to hurting families. My relationship with Christ is just kind of put the exclamation point on it. He didn't fail me. Couldn't have made it without him. I think just trusting and believing that he, he's got a plan. Rely on your faith, and he's going to be there with you. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, grant me the grace to focus on praying to you with sincerity in my heart and a willingness and openness to listen to you and accept your will for me. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.